Welcome back to the Backyard Professor Chess videos. I'm the Backyard Professor and this is the chess board that I'm going to use to show you a really interesting game today. This is also a Rui Lopez we saw in the last video by Chigorin how they played a Rui Lopez in the late 1800s and now this is by a friend of mine and a subscriber of my channel titled Patzer he was kind enough to send the game to me, and he played Anand, the world champion. Anand, I don't think, was the world champion at that point. I might be wrong, titled Patzer. If I am, I apologize. You can correct me in the comments, but let's play this interesting Rui Lopez. Anand is playing white, and titled Patzer is playing the black pieces, and they're going to do a Typical Rui Lopez here. Knight f3. There it is. Knight c6. Bishop b5. And he's going to bump the a6, of course, and then he drops to a4. And now Title Patra pulls his other knight out, and this is typical of. One variation of the Rui Lopez. There's a lot of things you can do in the Rui Lopez. Usually, as a general rule, if I remember correctly, it's been a while since I studied the Rui, but you don't want to immediately start pushing that bishop back just yet. Uh, go ahead and develop some pieces. There's a lot of pawn moves if you're doing that, and in the meantime, he's getting critical development, right? So that will come. But not just yet. Don't go too early on that trigger for that one. And now Anand ah, castles. Good castle, tucking it away. Title Patcher is going to prepare the castle, giving him a, a secure center at this point, which Anand is going to open up, secure his center pawn, open up the pathway for his bishop, and of course he can bring his knight out any time. Yes. Here, when he pushes the d3, more or less announcing I'm going to continue my development because now my center is solid. Uh, now he pushes. Oh, whoops. Now I drop his pawn on his head, but now he pushes the pawn to b5 and... Anand, of course, moves his bishop, of course. You don't expect him to leave it there, do you? No. And now... Title Patzer also secures his center, which is a good thing to do in any opening. And in the process of securing this pawn, true, his knight was holding it, but it's best to have a pawn chain, he also opens up the pathway for his bishop here. And he is ready to castle. So, so far it's a real good uh, Rui Lopez, I would say. In my humble opinion, and man do I emphasize humble. Now Anand goes a3, and it is here that Tidal Patzer castles. So we're both castled, we're both getting a decent development, there's technically speaking no weaknesses in any of the pawns. There's no weak squares really. So at this point it's a good game. Anand continues to bring out the guns and titled Patzer, not to be intimidated, continues to bring out the guns. Remember the, uh, the theme is with the bishops, the bishop idea here, rather than taking the knight with his bishop, Anand moved his bishop back because he wants to keep his bishop. It does point to the kingside castle, right? The idea of the bishop here is to pin this knight to the queen. This knight is on the king's side. I, I'm just pointing a general feature out that we all know and we've all heard, and yet it always helps to keep it in mind because it will help us grasp a couple of moves in this game, right? Anand, once he solidifies the center, 
Now he brings out yet another piece. Notice just the systematic clicking. Boink, 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 boink. Put your pawns in a strong position, all three on the covered on the castle side, and systematically bring out your pieces. That's excellent chess. Notice Title Patter is doing the exact same thing. There's no real weaknesses in the pawn structure. The centers appear to be real good. The development uh, is roughly pretty even at this point, yes. No one's willy-nillying around with any pieces. Now, as soon as I say that, of course, titled Patter moves a piece twice, knight d4. But let's look at this. This is a really cool, interesting thing to see in this game. And I want to point this out. The knight is pinned. What do you do with the pinned piece? Come on, say it out loud so I can hear you. Right! You in the back, the little kid with the red shirt. Good job, buddy. I know you didn't answer the question, but you're still paying attention. It's the girl in the skirt that answered the question. Good job, girl. You always attack the pinned piece. Always, yes. When you pin it, then attack it, because it can't move, right? It can't move without endangering the queen. So Tidal Pather... Yes, he has a second piece move, but it's a great piece move. It has purpose. So, Anand is more or less forced to simply take the knight at this point. Because you can't let black... take the knight. Because you're on the castle king side. And you couldn't respond by retaking with the queen because the bishop will take the queen. Basic elementary stuff. So he would be again forced to retake with the pawn breaking up the pawn cover of the castle king and opening up a gapping lane toward the king. So that's why that move is so interesting. So Anand, more or less, has to take the knight. And he does so. Not a big crisis, but it's just kind of an interesting little nuance if you run across this in the Rue Lopez. Keep that in mind when that knight is pinned. You can tr find a way to attack that knight, then do it. If nothing else, with a less experienced player, you could really goof up the castled king side because they would have to respond by retaking with the pawn, right? So that's kind of a fun little micro lesson. Thanks for playing that move, titled Pastor. That was good. We are playing against Anand, however. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, of course, the pawn will then be saying there's no point in not taking the bishop. you got to keep the power even, right? Now e takes d4. And this causes a nod to be able to put his knight at d5. A good central outpost. Now it's not a permanent one, of course. No, because the pawn can bump up. Or, if title Pastor wishes, he could exchange the uh, knights. But that's a good central powerful knight at this point, yeah? Instead of worrying about attacking the knight, what Tidal Pastor did next, and instead of just chasing the knight off, realistically, and I think Tidal Pastor knew this, uh, Anand would just simply exchange the knight. And the knight on the castle king side is really a good guardian. That's, that's a great piece to have around your castle king, yes? So what Patter did is he bumped it up two, giving him a stronger center still, supporting his advanced pawn from that knight, although it is pinned at this point. The queen doesn't have to stay there, though, right? The queen can move, and then the knight can bump out, if the title Patter lets him. If the queen moves, 
the time of Patrick could take that knight and break up the king side. That's another nuance of this. So instead of worrying about chasing the knight out, he is solidifying his center. Now it's true, the other thing this pawn move does is it does gain space. And with greater space, you have the greater ability to coordinate your pieces better for either defense or attack. You can have a stronger, more capable manipulation. Uh, this opens up a greater probability for you being able to use good tactics, right? The greater space. So there's nothing wrong with that pawn bump. If it's going to be, we understand the king side has been castled on both both players. It appears it could be a queen side pawn storm, if that is what Patcher is thinking. But it doesn't have a lot of peace support, so it's probably not what Patcher was thinking. But it does gain him valuable space. Just. I, I know all of this is basic, but that's the point. By re-going through the basics over and over and over again, we do and can and will improve our chess tremendously. So this is a great game so far. There's been a couple of interesting little nuances. In the process of pushing the pawn, another thing we notice in reading the chessboard is this has given Patter a bad bishop meaning that his central pawns are on the same color as his dark squared bishop. Ideally, he needs to find a way to exchange this bishop. This bishop's a good one. He's got the run of the board. This one is really bad. So it would help if, in the future, he can somehow find a way to swap that bishop. And really, it wouldn't matter... Uh, he's going to have to take one of the knights because the black bishop of Anand is already gone. But it wouldn't matter if he exchanged it with another bishop, although in this case he can't, or a knight. The point is exchange that bad bishop. Because that's, that, yes, he gained greater space, but that's going to hamper him. That makes sense? So this is getting interesting. There's some, there's some uh, pluses, and there's... Uh, a negative or two, not a catastrophe, just something to keep in mind. Keep in mind the minor pieces. Jeremy Someone makes a huge whoop to do. So did Aaron Nimzovich, and so does Arthur Yusupov. I'm just saying that that is a critical, important part of the chess match. And here, Amon does something. Now, Patter thought this was a dubious move. Patzer actually at this point was thinking he, he liked his position better than Anand's. And Anand pushing the pawn was not quite what Patzer was thinking uh, would have happened, should have happened. Um, and, and so he bumps his bishop back to e6. Here, so let's see how this works. And now, yeah, yeah, we see... The pawn did pass the knight. So now the knight is not eternally posted because the bishop can threaten the knight and the knight is threatening the knight. So Anand goes ahead and swaps. He now takes the guardian, one of the guardians of the king's side. Now notice neither one of these guys have left their king uh, unaided. So this is good chess. This is really good chess. Very nice. And the bishop, again, not with the pawn, man. Uh-uh. No, no, and did I say no? And I hope you understand both what the N and the O in no means here. <laughs> oh, the glories of intelligence, whatever. Mm. Not with the pawn. There is no point in breaking up the king's side, pawn side. You want those pawns because, see, that instantly weakens this square. Right? Because now that square is not guarded. So not with the pawn, with the bishop. Correct? 
correct response and exchange there. Yeah. So he very properly exchanged with the bishop, not the pawn. Right? Here, Amand does something really important and interesting. Rather than leave the tension between the bishops, Anand is going to take the initiative. Because if he lets Patzer take that bishop, it goofs up his pawn chain. It, get, it creates weaknesses on the queen's side where Patzer has none. Does that make sense? Granted, this is true. If Patzer took the bishop and then the pawn took Patzer's bishop, it would open up a, a file for the rooks. But Anand does not want the weaknesses on that side where his, where Patzer's pawns are so far forward. That's my suspicion of why uh, Anand went ahead and kept exchanging. What, what continually exchanging the pieces has done here is it has helped Anand maintain his pawns uh, in a better formation, right? Neither one of them are down a piece at all. But it's better that he makes Patzer bump his pawn over. True, it does remove the pawn so that there is a partial file here for a rook. But the structure here, he does have the double centered pawns, but they're not weak. They have advanced. He commands some good squares into a non territory with this lead pawn, and all of the pawns are connected, so it, it's... I mean, the weakness is compensated for. If you can call it a weakness, I'm not even sure if you can call the center double pawns a weakness. One, he's helping keep the center semi-closed, well, close, as far as that goes. So that was an interesting strategy on Anand's part to continually exchange down in order to maintain the pawn's integrity. And the only reason I'm emphasizing this to you guys is because I really need to see that. That is important for me because I, for whatever reason, when I play chess, my pawns get so beat up and blasted and I end up with so many weaknesses, it's silly. So that was really instructed to see Anand keep exchanging the minor pieces down. And now we do have a difference in the minor pieces Intriguingly enough, Pater is still stuck with his bad bishop. That's the other thing I wanted you to see. Pater is still stuck with his bad bishop. Anand, in a semi-close, it's still coagulated, so to speak. The knight should prove more useful than the bad bishop. And that's the other reason why Anand very properly hurried and exchanged the good bishop, because that was Anand's bad bishop. So Anand turned the tables on. Anand got there first, swapped his bad piece, kept his pawn integrity, and now Pater is stuck with the bad pawn in a somewhat closed board, which in general favors the knights. And Anand has the knight. So, so this is great heads-up chess. I just wanted to point that out to you. And now, oh, I bumped it. Sorry, it was here. I put it wrong. And now Anand pushes a4. Sorry, that should have been back here at a3. Oh, my goodness. I bet you guys are wondering, what the heck is his A4 pawn doing there when just the frame before it was A3? Yeah, well, it's the backyard professor stuff, okay? I have to have a goof up in every game. <laughs> it's been a while since I've made chess videos. Just work with me. At this point, Anand pushed the A4. Boy. I'll bet I hear about that in the comments. That'll probably throw you off. I apologize. And now, Passer 
brings his queen to c7 and connects his rooks. Very good. Bringing another piece in and connecting his rooks. And Anand also pulls his queen up and he says, okay, I like this idea. Let's engage the queens and connect the rooks. Technically speaking, there are no open files. There's a there's a there's a semi-file, but it's not very useful at this point. Uh, so they're they're probably getting ready to open up some files, right? Because now the rooks can be activated very very easily, and now Pathor pushes e5, and that closes the center, which means technically, if he can put it together, the knight could prove more favorable for Anand than Pater's bad bishop. And his bishop really can't go anywhere. Useful. So Pater's kind of stuck here. Okay, let's see what Anand does. He pushes c3. Now, notice that they maintained the tension, and now he is adding more tension. He's going to open up some files. You have to open up some files to get your rooks involved properly. Yeah, So that means pushing the pawns. And, and true, he is attacking the front of the pawn chain. It doesn't matter. Get some files open. So that is, that is a typical and proper exchange. And now, path to go c4. So we're going to open things up here now. Okay, and, and truly, when you have a bad bishop, I mean, it's not a disaster if you can move your pawns off of the color that your bishop, bad bishop's on. So, that gets that pawn off of a black square, potentially trying to help himself get that bishop activated. Right? That makes sense. And now rook f comes to c1. Of course, you can see why. And it makes sense that he puts it on the c file because the c file is going to open up. One of those files are going to open up, right? So that makes sense. And then he brings his rook. Notice he's trying to keep, he's trying to maintain the uh, use of the pieces and the development, right? And then queen comes back to d1. And the only reason he moved his queen was to get his rooks activated. Now his rooks can start playing a part. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. And now he pushes d5. Notice what Pathur is doing. He is moving his pawns off of the dark squares, which can help his bishop. He is also making it so that there will be pawn exchanges so that the files will begin to come into play. So he's hoping to free up his bishop. I, I mean, that's... Granted, his position is not as strong at this point. Even, and yet, he really has a center here. He really does have space, you got to keep in mind, the queen is across from the rook, though. Be careful. <laughs> right? It's always useful to put a rook opposite either the opponent's king or the queen. Yeah. So that could cost him a tempo if you're not careful. So we want to we wanna kind of try to watch that as well as you can. And now E will take D5, fundamentally so. Begin to exchange the pawns. And notice he took a pawn that he can't be re-exchanged. And he opened up the E file for him. Even though his rooks are on this side, it's all okay. And now Queen goes to B7. He's targeting the D5 pawn. And now... Anand exchanges another pawn. We're going to open up some files here. And you do want to re-exchange that pawn, fundamentally so. And now the knight is going to go to greener pastures. All of the play, 
there's no kingside attack here. All of the action and play is on the queen side, and so you want to involve all your pieces, and so the knight heads toward the queen side. All the pieces involved. That's how that works. That's good chess. Yes? And now queen will take, retake the pawn. And now here, uh, Pater just owns the center, doesn't he? Alekin was one of the masters of maintaining the center in the beginning, the middle, and the end. As Nimzovich taught in his book, My System. And all of the grandmasters are aware of this. So we're, we're well into the middle game. And Pater's position is not too bad at this point. That's not too bad. And Amand will come up knight e4. Now, that knight is permanent. That knight won't be exchanged. So, true, it is only on the fourth rank. I mean, it's not deep in the, in, in the uh, territory of black yet, but that is a very, very strong knight. That's good chess. And the D will take the C. Blap. Opens up a partial file. There's no black pawn here in his way now. Right? And Rook will take the C pawn. Bringing his Rook into the game. And then C takes D3 opening up the files for the rooks, and now they're opposing each other. And what do you think Amon's going to do? Does he exchange the rooks? Not yet. His central might has had its support undermined, and there's no point in trying to babysit the knight at this point, because the end of the game is going to be the queen and the rooks, so exchange. And that's what he does. He exchanges. The rook takes the bishop. I mean, the knight takes the bishop. Sorry. And then g will take. Now, he does have the two pawns connected, but technically, this one's up ahead, but he has pawn islands, and He's got an individual pawn and the pawn on, on the king here. The pawn on the king side here is much stronger than the pawn structure. Uh, we're beginning to see Patser get it from Anand. Anand is just one step ahead of our poor Patser. However, yeah. Queen g4 check and king will come to h8. And now the attack is on. Now, he opened up. Patrick's king side, and now bring the queen into it and attack the king. Now exchange the rooks. And he does so. He keeps the king on this side, but Patrick gets whopped because now the queen can take the rook and go check. The king goes to g7, and the queen comes back up to g4. He's a piece up. The game is essentially o over at this point. Once the king comes to here, then Anand secures the king to that row. And at this point, the game is essentially over. I'll play a few more moves just to show you uh, what happens. Uh, he puts up a good fight until that point. I honestly don't... I think he was just trying to see if Anand could uh, could win with just a queen. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure he can. And so now the, the game really is over here. And then he'll go to queen d7, king g6, and of course he takes d3. And he moves back to, uh, no, he, he bumps up the pawn to 
F5, and so now Anand is just simply picking him off. And so, essentially, the game's over. Uh, a few more moves, and Anand checkmated him, but what an interesting game to see how uh, several of the chess principles that we've been learning were displayed by both players. Anand, of course, is vastly superior, but just the thrill of being able to play against him on. I mean, I'm, I'm thrilled for you, Patrick. That was awesome. Thank you for sharing your game. You did well. You, There were no major blunders until that very last end move where you just dropped your queen, and you shouldn't have, in my opinion, but you are playing him on. <laughs> so, so there's your chess video. Thanks for watching the Backyard Professor Chess videos. Remember, stay safe. Uh, I know no one in America comprehends what social distancing is. We're going to ignore the COVID virus until it hits us with a second wave, and I really hope the medical experts are wrong that there's going to be a second wave. Uh, it's unlikely that they are. And so, truly, try to be safe as you can. Social distance, that's six feet. That's important. You may be one who can survive COVID virus, but if you take it home and start killing off your family members, you have to live with that. So think ahead, right? And in the meantime, be good, do well, have fun, sleep tight, dream well. Yeah, man, everybody should have good dreams. Stay happy, keep studying chess. And I will see you in the next Backyard Professor Chess video.